To check piston valve clearance using clay, you will need to have the cylinder head off so that you can see the piston to begin with. And the piston needs to be clean, so I just spray a little bit of uh, brake parts cleaner onto a rag and then wipe off the crown of the piston before I start. Now you'll need to apply clay to the top of the piston in the valve relief area. And the clay that I'll be using is just modeling clay that I picked up from an arts and crafts store for a few bucks. Uh, this is oven dry. They usually sell air dry and oven dry. I just assumed that the oven dry would be less likely to dry out when stored. You could also use Play-Doh. Uh, same stuff you ate when you were a kid can be used to check this as well. It really doesn't require a lot of clay for these small engines, so just start with a tiny chunk and then you'll want to kind of form it into a rough shape and then press it into one of the valve reliefs. So on this one I'm starting with the intake valve and just get it in there and make sure it covers the entire valve relief area. Okay, so that's on there. It is, I'll say roughly a hundred thousandths of an inch thick. You don't want too much on there because it can end up getting stuck in between the uh, valve and the seat area. But you want to have enough that you can get a good measurement. Now I'll repeat the process for the exhaust valve and put clay in there. When performing this check, the goal is to have the clay stick to the piston rather than get stuck to the valve or the cylinder head. So what I do to try and prevent that is take just a little bit of oil and put it on top of the clay and just smear it around. And you want to do that for both intake and exhaust side. Then I do the same for the head, just put a drop of oil on the valves and smear the oil around the valve head, again to help keep the valves from sticking to the uh, clay. Then the engine should go back together as normal, so assemble the head, use the head gasket and put your cam and tensioner and rockers all in place. Anytime I do this check, I like to set my valves to zero latch. So normally you would set the valves to let's say two to three thousandths of an inch clearance between the rocker arm and the tip of the valve. But in this case I like to have zero clearance so that the rocker arm is just touching the tip of the valve but not pressing on it and trying to press the valve down any. So I have to loosen up my adjuster nut And then I will screw the adjuster down while I wiggle the rocker arm around until I feel that I take up all the clearance or all the play there. And I want it just at the point that I remove all the play because I don't want it so far down that it's trying to push the valve down and open the valve. So now I'm at the point where I don't feel any play anymore and I will go ahead and tighten the nut up to finish setting my zero lash. Now you'll need to rotate the engine around so that you have two full revolutions of the crankshaft or one full revolution of the camshaft. And the reason is the camshaft moves at half the speed of the crankshaft. So the crankshaft has to rotate twice before the camshaft rotates once. And you need the camshaft to rotate one full turn because you have to make sure that you go through the points where the valves are closest to the piston. So you can either watch the timing mark on the flywheel and make sure that you see the T and the timing mark go around two times so you know the crank's rotated twice. Or you can watch the camshaft and you have these marks, usually it's a hole and then two lines that run parallel with the top of the cylinder head. And when you rotate the engine around once, when the crank rotates around once, this hole that's in the top will then be on the bottom here. And then when you get to the second revolution, this hole will return to its original position. And that's what you need to see. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay. 
So you can see the hole in the top has made it back to the top where it should be. So I know that my camshaft has rotated one full time. My crankshaft has been turned over two full revolutions. When you're doing this, if you feel significant resistance at top dead center, then you should stop because if it feels like the piston stops up there, it may be that you actually have a valve touching the piston and you don't want to continue and force it and end up bending a valve or something while you're checking to prevent such a thing. So if you feel a lot of resistance, stop and pull it back apart and see what you've got then. Now that that's finished, I can remove the rocker arms, camshaft, and the cylinder head so that I can see the clay on top of the piston again. Now the head is removed so we can see the clay and the piston again. On the top, you should be able to see a very clear indentation where the valve has pressed into the clay. On the bottom, there's an indentation as well. It's not as clear as what we see on the intake valve, but there is one there. Now you'll need to use a razor or utility knife or box cutter, something very sharp and thin, and cut horizontally down through the clay pieces. And you're looking to cut through the thinnest section if possible. So if you notice that some other section looks thinner, you can cut there, but generally the center will be the thinnest section. I find it easiest to use a digital or a dial caliper to measure the clay thickness. So what I'll do is open the caliper a little bit and then you see this section on the bottom will protrude and then you press down onto the top of the piston near the thinnest point of the clay until the caliper base meets up with the clay. And when you're doing this you want to try not to compress the clay but just to get it close enough that it is just barely touching there. And then once you do that, you can read the uh, measurement on your caliper to see what the thickness is. Some people prefer just to use a simple small steel rule and to try and match that up to the thickness of the clay the best they can that way. And some may not even cut the clay but just stab this down through the clay and try to read it in that manner. Another method, some people will try a feeler gauge and see what feeler matches up with the thinnest section of the clay, which can be a bit tricky when you're working on such a small engine unless you have very tiny feeler gauges. But that's another way you could try to do it. I think the easiest ways usually involve the piece of the clay that you have removed from the piston, and that's why you want to be very careful when you do cut it off of the piston and remove it. And again, you could go with the steel rule method and try to match that up. Or you could use your caliper once again, set this on a flat surface and try to measure it that way. You could try the feeler gauges this way. But the way I like the best is just to pick the clay up and use my calipers to just very, very lightly pinch the thinnest section and then take my reading that way. After you've found a way to measure the first valve impression, then repeat the process on the second valve impression, and then write down both of those numbers. The other check that you can do with the clay method that you can't do with some other methods of checking piston to valve clearance is to check the radial clearance. And what that is is basically the distance between the valve impression there and between the top of your valve relief because obviously you don't want the valve to be right up butted against the edge of the valve relief. You need a little bit of clearance there. And you can use some of the same methods to try and measure that by just matching it up with a ruler, feeler gauges, or by trying to measure it with your calipers. You should look for about 50 thousandths of an inch piston to valve clearance on the intake side and about 80 thousandths of an inch on the exhaust side and then about 50 thousandths of an inch radial clearance. I have another video up if you'd like more information about piston to valve clearance and how to change it. 
and I also have a video showing a different method of measuring piston to valve clearance with a dial indicator. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please like it, favorite, and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.